All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to stream. <coughs> uh, apologies. Hi. Welcome to stream, everyone. Hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome in, everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome to stream. Welcome to stream. Hope y'all are doing well. Hope y'all are doing okay. Over here in Canada, it's kind of gloomy. Or at least the part I can't. A part of Canada that I'm in. How am I? I'm doing, I'm alive. I think, I think that's the best way I can put it. <laughs> I'm alive and I'm watching a playthrough of God of War Ragnarok uh, with the partner and patiently waiting uh, for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to come out. So I'm doing pretty okay. But anywho, like the title of the stream says, we are going to be, I'm going to be drawing the same scene in a few different moods. What did it say? Four? Drawing one scene. Is it just different moods? Is that what the scene stream is called? Something like that, yeah. But I will be drawing the same scene in a few different moods. Um, so different lightings and a different few different ways of working. So I'm gonna be doing that. It is mostly gonna be a chill stream. I'll talk about my process a couple of times uh, for a little bit. Um, I won't. It won't really be a step by step though. Um, you're sick. Uh, that that sucks, man. I'm sorry. I I started to get a little sniffly today too. Um, but all right. Before we begin. We all kind of know the drill because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. And we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges. Or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right, all right, sick. I, that was the first time I haven't really messed up that in a while. <laughs> um, anywho, before we get to our actual illustration for the day, we have to do our submissions. It's art submissions time art submissions time it's time to see who submitted and who did the fun stuff it is weapons month so we are doing nothing but weapons designs for this month um this one was submitted by afropunk mothman on the discord i love that username by the way um but yes so if you wanted to submit weapon designs join the discord you can you know submit a design that you think would you'd like to see me talk about in the beginning but starting with this one afro punk mothman i believe that they said that like why have a bunch of weapons you can have one weapon that can just turn into a bunch of things i think that's smart i like that idea that's called um efficiency i like this a lot i think this is really fun that there's like this weapon that can just reform into a bunch of different things and the one consistent thing about it is the handle that you have in a bunch of different ways i think that's really cool that's a really really cool fun way of designing a weapon and they're all like they're all kind of connected with the spectral magic and i think that's really cool um very nice very well done uh this next one is by gustozies <laughs> gustozies very very fun design i think that they said that this one was inspired by like a minecraft weapon that they had i really love the kind of spectral energy there's a lot of spectral energy this time around i like this this sort of ghost that you have going on. I've always been a fan of axes and scythes and all that. So I'm a big fan of this one. Love how this one's gonna be. Love how this one has been rendered. I love how this one was designed. I also just like intricate designs and weapons. I think that's fun. Um, this next one, designed by Jackie. Love me a good elemental staff. Love me a good naturey staff. To me, it feels like a, like a staff of the wild mother. Like if you've ever if you played D D. You know, the, the, what the symbol of the Wild Mother is. It kind of reminds me of that. Um, I love this. I love big druid-like staves, and I think that this one does a really good job. Very well done. Very well done. Very, very nice. Uh, this next one by Scribbling Joe. I believe we've had Scribbling Joe's work on here before. This is a really fun kind of, like, spore takeover gun. It's a... Oh, I think it's like a revolver with a... With a mushroom. Or a, a revolver with a, like a few, like spore, fungus, fungi, taking it over. I like this a lot. Uh, the, my philosophy when I design inanimate objects 
is like I try to mix it or inorganic objects any like inorganic thing that I have to design I try and mix it with something organic so I can continue to keep it like fun for me because I don't like designing inorganic things very much so this one speaks to me I vibe with it very very fun this one oh dear I know I have I I, see, I told myself, I'm like, I don't need to put the name on it. They put they put their name right there. This one's by Snarver. Snarver. I can't read it that well. I'm sorry. You probably can see it better than I can. My screen is very, very tiny. It's, uh, it's right on the the, 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 the the handle of the the dagger sword thing right there. Um, is their signature. But this is very, very fun. I always love when, like, swords and daggers, when they're... I think it's called the pommel. I, I'm not good with the anatomy of weaponry. Um, but I like how the handle, oh, I like it when the handle is something. Like, I think pommels and handles and that sort of thing, they, I, it's somewhere where you can be a little bit more creative, I think. You can be creative with the blade, but most people are creative with the blade. And I think that making the, the handle more fun is also something that we should focus on. And I like how this one is like a, it's like a head. It's like a dragon's head or like a creature's head. And I think that's really cool. Um, dragons endure. Okay, so it's like a dragon hand. Um, very fun. I love this one. I love this one. Very, very nice. Well done. All right, I think that's all. Yes, that's all this week. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted for this week's art. Very, very nice. Love it. You love to see it. Um, but okay, I believe... Okay, what did the poll say? The poll said that I was going to draw <sighs> a cottage in the woods this time. I think that's it. <sighs> All right. I love God of War. God of War 5 is released, and I'm like, <laughs> it's so weird to see a Atreus have a more developed voice, and he's taller than Brock and Sindri now. It's like, <laughs> I love that game so much. <laughs> All right. Just made me on. Yeah. Apologies, y'all. I am. Um, this stream might be all over the place. Just letting you know. I'm in one of them head spaces. How are y'all doing though? How's your week been? How you been vibing? Tell me about how your week's been. Mine has been a week, certainly. <laughs> Great, you're good. Mine has certainly been a week. I have exi I am existing. That's that's the the what I could say about my week. <laughs> Very sleepy? Oh, you and me both. Earthling 83. Tell me. Tell me. What have you done this week? What have you, what have you experienced? How big is this image again? Oh, that's not very large. It's okay. We'll keep it that size. So true, Jesse. Behind on something I need to get into high school. Oh, like, are you applying to a different high school, I guess? Joining a D&D &D group tomorrow, so my friend isn't there. With a bunch of strangers, but I've never really been into that kind of thing, apart from Warrior Cards RPs on a scale of one to Warrior Cat. I love D&D. &D. I was never really a big D&D &D person when my best friend first told me about it. Um, and then I started watching her campaign, one of her campaigns online, and I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, d and is just like a big story that you get to play in. I'm like, that's sick. That's super fun. And then I got into it, and now I, I am addicted <laughs> so yikes fevers tropical storms never a dull moment with me understood just woke up from a nap you and my partner both oh king crow hi <laughs> i was like hey god that i i hope i wonder if that's the username that i know i wonder if that's the same person <laughs> hi Watching a new show myself. Nice. What are we watching? Is this the same? Is this the King Crow that I'm thinking of? If you know, you know. <laughs> so glad my art professor introduced me to you. Ah, what professors are introducing me now? That's so weird. Yes, vibes. Vibes. 
Oh, that's fun. I get to say it out loud. King Crow, I love your line work, dude. You have a great, really fluid style. You have a very fun style. It's very, it's very, it doesn't hinge on to anything, and I think that's really cool. Like, you kind of just, you kind of found your voice in your work, and I think that's really cool. You draw the twins really well. I mean, you just draw really well in general, but... Love your work, of course. Rise of the TMNT is so good, can't believe I didn't find about it sooner. Oh, is that like the, the really well animated one? I think that one only got one season, didn't it? Sucks. It's beautifully animated. Learned to use Medibank because of you, I didn't know you stream too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, every Friday. Every Friday is me. Every Sunday is Iggy or, or Vanessa. We kind of swap between the two. Was the voted scene that I needed to draw? Cottage in the Woods. I've kind of just started drawing and I didn't really think about what I was drawing, so let me do that again. <laughs> uh, I've also broken my control key so I can't animate for a little bit or I need to throw off my muscle memory in my brain sad times. No! Uh, do you only have one control key? You might have two. So if you look on your keyboard, you might have one on the left and one on the right. Check to see if you can use the one that you don't use as much. Uh, is there a background back video that shows us background environment colors blending together? I've been trying out background and colors never feel like they harmonize. That's a good question. I know we have a background stream, but I think that that one's more like, uh, like perspective and stuff. Not sure about the coloring portion. Joanne, you mind checking that out? I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, there should be two control keys on your, uh, on your keyboard, Benny. The same thing happened to me um, when my shift key stopped working <laughs> on my old laptop. Um, actually, it was really bad. I There was a bunch of keys that kind of just stopped working on my laptop, and I was like, okay, I think it's time for a PC. Um, it was... I know that the letter T didn't work. I didn't really work that well. O started to stop working. Backspace stopped working. Um... Zero, nine, and seven stopped working. My Windows key had stopped working ages ago, but a bunch of my keys stopped working and it was like not okay. <laughs> it was not great. I think it's really funny that a bunch of Russian words are just English words in a quirky font. I mean, not really, <laughs> but I guess you could kind of say that with a lot of languages. It's just like, oh, it's just this language, but written differently. <laughs> Rip keyboard. Yeah, no, I have a really nice keyboard now. I love my keyboard. I've had it for ages. Evidently, I pick up my keyboard when looking at my computer. Didn't realize until I pulled off the control key. No! <laughs> Agony! Little chimney. My right control key is working, so I need to fix up my Russell memory, but I don't know. I need to go looking. My brother with my keyboard in hand looking like this. <laughs> valid. There you go. We love having multiple uh, keys. I have art block the past few days. I don't know what to draw. I always find that art block, like, if you have art block, then like sometimes it's just good to just stop for a little bit. I don't really get art block that frequently. I think I've gotten art block like once before. And I just stopped and let myself sit for a second. I more often get motivational block than art block. Um, whenever I have a motivational block, I kind of just sit there. Or I just doodle mindlessly until I come up with something. Don't draw with the intention... When you're drawing, don't always draw with the intention of making a final piece. Sometimes it's just nice to draw for drawing's sake. Doodling is always a good option. It's really bad when backspace stops working. Just be perfect immediately like me. <laughs> Yo, my backspace key, when it stopped working, it was not a good time. I had to get an external keyboard for my laptop, y'all. That was not a great time. Now I work on a PC and I can switch out my keyboard whenever I want. But I love my keyboard and I have no need to switch it out. Draw random lines and try to guess what's hidden in there to get inspired. That's also fun. When I have art block, I just start aggressively drawing or sketching. I find that when I have art block- yeah, no, when I have art block, I kind of just draw whatever pops up into my head first. 
You'll always know, I tell my friends this a lot, we'll always know when I'm in a really bad mood if my artwork gets really experimental. That's how you know that I'm not doing great. <laughs> uh, drawing a dragon head shot for the first time in months. I'm really glad the mouth's actually good looking good so far. That's great. I have to draw a dragon. Oh, do y'all want to see my new D&D &D character? <laughs> I'm playing in a there's there's gonna be a one shot that I'm uh, that's gonna be streamed in a little bit um, that I'm playing in I okay here let me find him his name is Scuttle I'm playing a goblin because <laughs> <laughs> it's a one shot this is gonna be my intro to playing a spellcaster I haven't finished him yet uh, where is he where's where's Scuttle I'm still designing him but he's very heavily inspired off of like the knocker from um, What's it called? The Spiderwick Chronicles. He's uh, he's gonna be a, a shadow sorcerer. Um, he's gonna be a shadow sorcerer. He lives in caves and bites rocks and uses spider legs to pick his teeth. And he likes to chew on gravel and bathe in it. He's very dumb, and I love him. He's gonna be. See, I design all these. Like, I have so many D D characters that I've designed, and they're like beautiful and elegant. The two that I am going to- the three that I'm going to play are gremlins. <laughs> they are small! Love the Spiderwick movie. I have watched the movie, but I have the Spiderwick creature compendium. And the knocker, like that illustration, does not, like, heavily inspired me. I was like, this thing rocks. And I kind of wanted something as wrinkly and ugly as that. I was like, let's do it. So, like, I have these, like, beautiful, like, tall, large D&D characters that I just don't play as. I play- I'm gonna play as Scuttle. I have another character who's just small and annoying and mean named Rye, and then I have Corn, who I play as. And Corn, as you all know, is a is a creature. <laughs> Weird that you have a drawing of me, lol. Love the details. Thank you. I love drawing gross little guys. I look like me when I come out of my room the first time in days you. True. Huge respect. Ears are hard. Yeah. Corn. I love corn. Yeah, drawing corn and playing as corn. We had a really fun session recently where I got to play like a very scared corn and that was a lot of fun. Like I got to talk to a horse. And I had to we had to instruct the horses not to not to go anywhere and like because I as a barbarian, uh, totem of the bear, I have just speak with animals as like a as like a cantrip basically. So I can just do it whenever I want. We had to talk to a bunch of horses and my my partner, my partner, who plays as a our Eldrin elf ranger, he was like, he was like, a corn. Can you like tell the horses not to move anywhere?" <laughs> and I went over to them and I like grabbed one of the horses by his face. I was like, "Can you like, I, are, are you gonna be okay if we like leave you in the spot for a little bit?" It was great. It was <laughs> the horse was like, "Okay, can I eat this grass?" <laughs> it was so funny. I love playing as corn so much. Haunts. How does D&D actually work? How do you play with a character you drew that you come up with? No idea how it works. It is very, like, self-made. d and is a game that you have to play with a bunch of friends. It's a role-playing game. So you have to build your character using, like, a character sheet or on a D&D Beyond, something along those lines. You gotta pick a class. You gotta pick a race. You gotta pick your moves, your stats, stuff like that. Well, if you're a martial class, you don't really need to pick your moves. But, like, you gotta pick your weapon. You gotta pick... That, all that kind of stuff. It's fun. A really vivid few scenes from a dream I had tonight. I feel like two weeks or more, but I can't seem to remember anything I saw from it clearly. Any tips on how to remember stuff? No, not dreams. <laughs> I have really, really vivid dreams. But if you want just to remember stuff in general, like of those memory games, I guess. But like, if we have... If we're talking dreams? Nah. Dreams are a fickle thing. Sometimes you remember them and sometimes you don't. What's my favorite color to work with? I actually, um, I used to always work with cool colors. I tend to work with warms now. Um, just anything warm tends to be my go-to. If I'm working with something. Start writing them down. Yeah, if you remember them right when you wake up, it might be good to write them down immediately. If you wake up and you just don't remember them, that's, I, I can't help you that, I'm sorry. <laughs>
don't trust your memory and write it down, lol. I have a dream log, yeah. Sometimes I, I used to write my dreams down all the time. I kind of stopped. If I really like the dream, then like I might wake up and do like a voice recording of it. I mean, my partner calls right in the morning all the time and he'll like, he asks how my sleep was and then he's like, any dreams? And then like we immediately tell each other the dreams that we had, if we had any. Might not be all that coherent if you're half asleep, though. No, no, usually- I'm pretty good at waking up, I, so I- I'll usually, uh, be able to just say what my dream was into a mic pretty easily. Uh... Am I gonna play the new Pokemon next week? I have it pre-ordered. Of course I am. trying to lucid dream a lot lately with different methods and stuff but it doesn't work i my mother is a natural lucid dreamer i wish i could i got that trait from her but alas i did not <laughs> i need to get it yes sir i'm excited oh, i guess i should just like Don't mind me. So what I'm gonna start with is just like a general like forest layout. I'm not really gonna... Uh, what's it called? Um, I'm not really gonna think of any moods at the moment. I'm just gonna paint in what I want. Pokemon games come out basically the last few weeks of the semester. The worst time. It's true. Yeah, no. <laughs> New Pokemon's really expensive. I'll watch a bit of the playthrough and see if I want to save for it. Yeah. Dust fair, dust fair. Looking at the chat back at the scene. My god, you have an entire forest. Oh, yeah. What tablet am I using? Exclamation point device Jesse. Yep, there it is. Oops, that's the wrong layer. Well, I was like, why is that showing up over there? <laughs> Do we have any God of War fans in here? I'm sorry. I'm like, my brain- Okay, I just got off call with my partner and we were watching. I'm gonna keep on mentioning him. I'm so sorry. But, like, we, uh, we, I just got off call with him and we were watching uh, Jacksepticeye's Ragnarok playthrough and I am obsessed. I, I am a huge God of War fan, so I was just like, I love a trans, I love a trans, I love my son. <laughs> I love my baby. Oh, you're playing it right now. Nice. No spoilers, though. No spoilers. I'm just saying how much I love the game. <laughs> my boy. My boy. Any tips for doing comics? Playing it first. Uh, what class do I teach in Wing Canvas? I teach mentorship, digital art, and uh, uh, cartooning and anime, but we've kind of closed that for now. <laughs> Sindri and Brock are so funny. I love Sindri and Brock. The first one, I love how they've developed in the second one. I love that, like, oh, wait, no spoilers. I won't say anything. Um, but it's, I, I love these characters. They're just so fun and they're so, like, I like, you know what I like the most about these newer God of Wars is that even though, like, they're very gloomy, it's a very gloomy kind of game, but they can still joke and they still have fun. I, th I think that's, like, I think that's really important for, a, like, a sadder, Kind of quiet, like a kind of dull, um, 
a dull kind of sad game. I think it's really important that the characters can still, like, joke and have fun or, like, poke fun at each other and whatnot. Because if it's all just doom and gloom, it gets really boring and, like... Like, I love doom and gloom, don't get me wrong. But I think that it's important that... And I think it's fun that they still have, like, these fun personalities with these characters. Not a spoiler, but there's one of the boat stories that you can, Or one of the boat conversations you can have between Atreus, Kratos, and Mimir. And Atreus is like, hey, hey, hey. I, my face is feeling kind of itchy. I think, like, my beard's growing in. And Kratos is like, is it? And Atreus is like, yeah, yeah, you see? And Kratos kind of pauses for a second. He goes is it <laughs> it's so funny they're so cute they're all so they're such fun characters um any reason you're starting off putting one color as your background this is a traditional artist's method um it's called having a base color so when you do this kind of like layered um glossed way of uh painting it's usually good to have a base layer down so that you can have that color peeking through and make stuff feel a little bit more natural there really no other reason than that. Um, oh, yeah, Photoshop. Haven't played any of the God of War games, but I want to. You should, it's fun. I enjoy Mimir Stories and Banter 100%. I so enjoy them. <laughs> You're planning on watching playthroughs? Do it, yeah. My partner and I are, um, because neither of us own a PS5. So... <laughs> And you're a traditional artist too. Yes, I think it's very important to know both. Um, I do go to university for illustration, um, and we are forced to work traditionally. Um, like uh, in terms of painting, I very much work in an alla prima kind of style for those who like painting. Um, so yes, I am a traditional alla prima painter. Um, I really love working with water-based oils. Those tend to be my favorites. Um, I can also work in watercolor. No, gouache is my favorite. I think acrylic gouache is my favorite, but uh, I do really, really love working in oil paints. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to learn both, um, like to, to have both under your belt, because if you know one, then you'll be able to, uh, have that under your belt. A and B, I find that knowing different aspects of art and like knowing, um, different styles and different methods will help you grow as an artist. And I think that that's really important. Oh, speak of the devil. Hi, Crow. <laughs> Gummy worms, let's go. I was telling them about how we were watching uh, God of War. <laughs> That's a type of pasta. Wait, what's a type of pasta? Awesome. <laughs> Paper and pencil, paint, or both? All. So I, I, my personal favorite mediums when working traditionally are... So it's anything that's not digital. An analog media. Analog media I'm talking about. Um, I personally really love... Um, working in ink ink and that sort of thing but yeah it's so good it's so good played the first god of war game until i got stuck in the boss battle the one where you have to get its heart yeah i've actually never played any god of wars i was never into it with the earlier ones because it was very like i don't know it, it wasn't my thing and then the fourth one came out and then now it's like it's so like it's so heavy story oriented oriented and like very very um, right in your face with a lot of, like, its philosophy. And I think that's very fun. I'm, I always enjoy games like that. Um, just got here. Sorry if I didn't explain this already. But regular brushes like the one you're using now better for coloring backgrounds or base colors? Uh, no, it's, see, it's up to you, really. Whatever you like to use. Um, personally, I'm using this builder brush because it's quick. Um, but if I was to do backgrounds, work a little, working a little bit slower, I would use a completely different brush. I have one that I really like using. Um, but yeah, this one's if I want to work fast. So really, whatever brush you decide to use is up to you. It, there's no, but yeah, like, like a textured brush is usually a lot nicer. Um, if you wanted to work with backgrounds and stuff like that, I find that a textured brush will really help you, um, get nicer shapes in there. Um, but really it is, it's up to you, whatever you, whatever you feel like working with. There's no really right or wrong answer. Do you personally think learning art history benefits an illustrator? Um, 
Yes and no. I think it's good to understand where your art came from. I think it's a good skill. Um, is it necessary? I don't think so. I think that as an illustrator, like for me, I have a very baseline understanding of art history. I think that like um, knowing where a lot of inspirations and styles come from is a really good piece of knowledge to have, but not necessary. Not in my eyes anyway. Um, some, some would argue with me and say that it is very necessary to understand where your art's coming from. Um, and I think that culturally it is. I think that it's a, I think it's important to know the origins of art and know the stories and the hardships that other people have gone through. Um, but in terms of like just skill base, I don't think so. Yeah, no, of course. Textured brush just feels more traditional when using digital media. It's true. I like the roughness. Um, I'm a very... I like working in a more rough way. Um, so I... Like, I love the rough textured, naturalistic kind of look. So, like, even even when I paint slower, um, I like to ha keep my brush strokes in there. Like, I like to keep my brush strokes visible and have them um, in a way where it's not, like... I'm hiding them away. So I think that having that um, texture in something, it's a light, it's a look that I like. It's, but it's, it's to each their own, right? There's no right or wrong answer. I, I'll keep on saying that. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to your work in that sort of way. As a pretend artist, I've thought about my art history classes a total of zero times since taking them on. <laughs> I want to get into painting more of my room as zero ventilation. I hate watercolor. True. God of War 2 is very fun. I actually, I never played God of War 2. Um, yep. Yeah, just find it works for you. Exactly. Exactly. I use the same brush for everything and I think it works. Yeah. Some people do that too. Um, I used to work with one brush. I think I started working with different brushes when I turned, um, like 17. So <laughs> I'd been doing digital work since I was like 13. So I stuck with that hard round for a very long time. Um, I did find that my work did reach a significant point of uh, improvement when I started using different brushes, but um, it is it is like, you know, to each their own. Hang on, I'm actually gonna change this a little bit. Let's saturate that a little bit. Nope. Let's switch up the hue. Can I? Ooh, I don't think I can, my friends. I can't make this like slightly redder. I guess I can. Just like. Can I do negative five? Sure. Let's go with that. Cool. I just wanted to brighten that up a bit. I realized it was kind of dull. <laughs> I just spent five hours writing about the Civil War. I don't even know how to spell it, so I put Silver War, even though I did amazing according to my history. <laughs> I got a 35. No. Yeah, to be fair, it is a paper. So like if you says if you spell the main theme wrong over and over, it's <laughs> that is kind of a cause for concern, I guess. Um, I'm studying art history right now for a school project, specifically early to mid 1900s experimental is really interesting. Yes, uh, surrealism and Dadism were very, very fun. Um, early 1900s things, I think. My favorite movement it is Dadism. I like, I love Dadism. Dadism and uh, I think it's Dadism and Surrealism are tied for me. Originally, I think it was just Dadism that I really, or just Surrealism, and then I started looking into to Dada, and I was like, Nah, this rocks. I love this. <laughs> yeah, I like it's required for me to take history as well. Personally, I, I'm like, I don't really like history. Like, I'd rather not learn it, but like, I understand why I have to. No, let's start back here. Let's do that. Yeah, that feels better. Uh, let's match this hue. Not hue, sorry. Match the, uh, the vibrancy. Like, I get why I have to take it, and it just doesn't mean that I enjoy it. That's- that's all. <laughs> I like you barely pronounce the second A, because Dadism is a much- is a much funnier name. Yeah, but I'm not gonna say Dadaism, alright? Like, I'm not gonna- like, I can say Dada. Like, I can just say that, but whatever. Um... 
What's saying knowing about art history would help is in addition to building and finding your art style, the method you want to incorporate into your art. For sure. Yeah. I find that. Yeah. No, like definitely. That's what I was mentioning. Like it's, it's good to under, it's good to know all these styles for your own growth or to like, cause it, knowing where stuff comes from in general tends to help with anything. Like, it, it, like I have, one of my courses is a, like a hard anatomy course. Like it is scientific. Um, I was on my partner's stream and for a, he had to he had to step away for a second and chat was talking to me about stuff and they asked, started asking me like bone questions and I was able to answer a good chunk of them because I just a I like really like bones B I'm taking this anatomy course so I know like a good chunk about <laughs> bones and that kind of anatomy thing um but uh, the reason why we have to take it is because it is um uh what's it called It's, it's like anatomy for artists, so no understanding what's underneath the skin helps us a lot when it comes to drawing what's on top of the skin. So like, I know a good amount about bones and I know a good about, about, about anatomy and stuff like that. Um, I wanna learn anatomy, it's very fun. You're a bones fan? Name every bone right now. I can name a good chunk of them in the arm if they want that one. I can, I'm really good with the shoulder girdle. I know a good chunk about, like, the thorax overall. Like, we have our thoracic vertebrae with our vertebral bodies back there. Um, we've got 24 ribs, but we label them 1 to 12. 8, uh, eight to 12 are your false ribs. Um, 1 to 7 are true ribs. 11 and 12 are floating ribs. Um, because they don't connect to the cartilage that connects to the sternum, the sternal column, or the sternal thingy. Uh, I will, I will name a bunch of bones. Like, I can name one bone, the skeleton. Sure. You're a bones fan. Why is my arm hurting? Where? It might not be your bones. It might be your muscles. It could be joint pain as well. I swear it sounded like you casted a spell. <laughs> my friend said that the first time I was like studying and they were like just the what and what the <laughs> what are you on about right now <laughs> like why'd my furniture start floating the necked uh slow down I'm taking notes <laughs> I am the thorax! I speak where the knees, the patellar bone. <laughs> Did you know that the patella is between a uh, different, like, uh, fibrous tissue? It's not actually, that's why it kind of floats there and it's why you can move it around. It's because it's not really connected to the skeleton. It's, be it's between like different bands of tissue. There you go. Do you have an anatomy stream or video? Yes, we have surface anatomy. We don't have the stuff underneath um, because I didn't know it then. <laughs> Maybe we'll do another one. Let's talk about the skeleton. We do have a, a slightly more thorough skull one that we did recently. I know that that one has like the different parts of the skull. Not all of them, but the ones that I found necessary. Like we have the zygomatic, the maxilla, um, the frontal bone, that kind of thing. Question, I was drawing an environment at night. Is the brightness of saturation that is it the brightness of saturation that goes down with distance? Uh both. So it, it also depends on what you're trying your overall scenery is trying to look like. Um it, it's all about like what you want it to look like. If you want it to get brighter into the distance, it's gonna look like it's getting farther away in a different way than if you made it darker in the distance. That kind of thing. So it's it's really up to you and what you want this thing to look like. Even if it's in the darkness, like it going farther away, if you get it brighter, you can still do it as if it's going brighter as it goes farther in the distance. Moving my patella right now. Can I remove my patella? Can I sell it? Patella only go for 40 bucks, so it doesn't matter. Um, but no, you cannot remove your patellar bone because it stabilizes your femur and the tibular, the head of the tibia as it attaches to the, the, oh shoot. It's at the, cause it's a hinge joint right at your knee. I can't remember what the, the things, the connection points are called. 
but your patella stabilizes it so it's like it has your acl and your pcl kind of right there and your patellar bone is there to stabilize those two so your leg doesn't extend too far forward or too far back why do i know it's 40 dollars? because uh i have a bone guy <laughs> the poor patella alone <laughs> What's my favorite food? Eggs Benedict. I love Eggs Benedict on, uh, what's it called? Uh, with smoked salmon, cream cheese on an English muffin or bagel. Actually, I like it on a waffle too. It's really good on a waffle. Um, you should be aware of the black market prices. No, no, no. I buy my bones from, um, What's it called? Ethical Sources. I've shown my bones on stream before. Um, I have a suckling pig skull, I have a muskrat, and a stoat. Those are my real ones. Um, they are all either um, the bones of animals that were going to be fed to zoo animals, or they were roadkill. So, not hunted and sourced just for their bones. Um, but they are already previously dead or were going to die. <laughs> um, and most people buy them for referential purposes or educational purposes. You show my bones on stream, that's dangerous. Nah, man, you just gotta be able to peel back your skin. That's such a funny coincidence because I work in a place that makes Eggs Benedict. I love Eggs Benedict, it's so good. There's a place that's near here, uh, like where I live, that makes this thing called Waffles Benny, and that stuff slaps. Like, it's so good. Personally, never looked at a skeleton and wondered if that dude lived a good life. <laughs> you wouldn't, though, Oz. I know you wouldn't. If you smiled on camera, you've shown your bones on stream. This is true. Hockey match at 10.40 a.m. tomorrow. I don't want to get up that early. Bestie, I gotta teach at 10.30. <laughs> I'm usually up by 8 or 7, depending on what I've done the night before and how tired I was. My friend found a clean badger skull in the woods when we were kids. I still think about it. How did it get there? Good question. Maybe somebody tried to clean it, or, like, there was a creature that ate it, and, like, I don't know. Oh, I forgot to put the music credits in the stream. I'll do that after stream. Remind me. This music is by Stevia Sphere. Find her stuff. It's great. I've been using this music for ages. Teeth are bones. Yes, yes, yes. Teeth are your only external bones in your body. I know I need to add variation to the trees, too. So, um, I'll do that in a moment. Notice that I'm, like, I'm in yellow now, but it still looks green. This is just because of the way that color theory works. This is Chevrolet's rule of color interaction. It is my favorite color theory thing that I have not taught about <laughs> on stream before. I have taught it to my mentorship kids, though. Fingernails are not bones. They are not. No, fingernails are made of keratin. My art teacher has a real human rib cage in our class. He uses reference. That rocks. I have a lab coming up in November, or like late November, um, where we get to see a, what's it called? Um, we get to look at a, what is the word? What is it called? The, the, uh, it's a body that's donated for science. It's the, the, a cadav. We get to see a cadav. Um, it's a, at an anatomy lab for a different university. We get to rent out the room and take a look at it. I'm very excited. It's gonna be awesome. Aren't fingernails made of hair? Technically, yes, but hair is also just made of keratin, so you can just say that they're made of the same material. Not necessarily hair, though. Because hair has a different makeup than the nails do. But yes, they are both made of keratin.
cadaver. Oh, you know what? I'm used to, like, French pronunciation. Um, yeah, a cadaver. Yeah, you can go to the... We're, we're gonna go see a cadaver. Hair is made of dead cells, right? No, I don't think so. They can have dead cells if your hair is dead and you dye it too much. <laughs> What's my least favorite thing to draw? Chat, can somebody guess what my least favorite thing to draw is? Because I have mentioned it before. Somebody want to say it? Cars. There you go. Yep, they know. <laughs> they know it's cars. <laughs> if there's anything I complain about the most on stream, it is drawing cars. Sorry, I have gotten up to get a sweater. It's not cold, but I have uh, my arms exposed and that spooks me. I remember mother. <laughs> vehicles, vehicles, cars. Yep, that's it. That's the one, y'all. Cars, for sure, are my least favorite of all the vehicular devices, but I, I despise drawing vehicles. If it gets you from point A to point B, I most and it's not organic, I most likely hate drawing it. <laughs> I think trains are worse. I actually don't mind trains as much. How come? It's I'm not a really big fan of drawing inanimate objects. Uh, for me, I see I'm I'm not I don't hate drawing a lot. I am totally okay with stuff that's difficult. It's not that it's difficult, it's that it's tedious. And I find that with cars and vehicles in general, I'm not able to just like sit there, look at a reference a couple times and be like, "Okay, I can do that from memory." Because I can do that with most things. I can't do that with vehicles. I always have to have a bajillion references open at all times. And I always have to, like, look up different things. And there's so many intricacies to them that seem just so tedious. So I hate it. <laughs> it just feels needlessly boring to me. That's that's why. <laughs> yeah, for real. It's 2D a toddler art style. You can't break a car down to shapes, really. Whenever I try, it looks off. You can. It is nothing but geometry, but there's so much geometry to the point that I find it boring. I'm like, I love geometry. I, I quite like drawing mechs. I like drawing robots, but that feels more fun. Like, even if it's not, like, humanoid shaped, I think that it's fun to do that kind of fantasy thing. Um... So I'm just like, I don't... I just don't like the way that cars handle being illustrated i guess i'm just like i'm bored of it i get bored of it very frequently and easily and for me i'm, a, I'm the type who likes to work off of like my interest like if i have an interest in drawing something that i will take interest in it and i will draw it fervently but if i don't then i work a lot slower <laughs> how do you feel about airplanes it's a thing that gets you from point a to point b not a fan I should have used. Ah, oh, man. That would have been smarter. Oh well. Yeah, this looks a lot nicer. Man. I'm done. I always I always struggle when it's like straight off the top of my head when I do forests. I find that I'm actually quite weak at drawing forests. I don't think like I'm that amazing at drawing forests. I think that like I could be a lot better. For some reason, there's like a, there's like a thing that blocks my brain from understanding how forests work. And you notice how I've been doing this all on one layer, and I haven't been like <laughs> using any special types of layers or anything. It's just me trying to figure out how this works. Struggling a little. It's okay. That's how it be. I should have, I should have been. That's my fault. It's okay. 
I guess I could technically always just redo it, redo parts of it, but it's gonna take a while. Eh. Saturated this and made it colder. Mm. Okay, that's okay. That's less of a tough fix than I thought it'd be. I'll just very quickly do this kind of thing. feels stronger. Yeah, that feels a lot stronger. Okay. Let's fix that then really quickly. Oh, great. Um... All those who are afraid car nerds will jump on me for get forgetting something important? 100%. I, I've told the story before, but there was, like, a time when my... one of my profs uh, for when I was... when I was in a concept art class, and he was very like he, he was very very impressed with my way of drawing an army tank um and he was like this is one of the most detailed army tanks i think i've ever done i was like thanks i had like 17 references because <laughs> i didn't want to get anything wrong and he's like yeah you got the axle right you did this right you did that right and i'm like mm -hmm. and i was like oh thank god i had all those 17 references because he knows exactly what's wrong <laughs> he would know exactly what's wrong i got 100 on that assignment um but it was like it was terrifying because if I had just decided to be a little bit more lazy, he would have known. <laughs> so I'm like, mm -hmm. kind of spooky, not gonna lie. But I didn't slack off, and that's the important part. <laughs> How do you take art seriously when you were young? How would you start? I started taking art seriously when I was about 13. And before then, what I would do is I just drew whatever the heck I wanted. I still do that. I still kind of just draw whatever the heck I want. Um, but especially when I was younger, I think it's more important to just find a love for art before you can take it seriously. Um, and then as I turned 13, I was like, okay, I think I, I, think I really do want to do this as a profession. And that's when I started to, like, be like, okay, um, I'm like, now I really need to focus on this. So a lot of my work became very centered around, like, um, what's it called? Getting better and accepting a challenge. And especially when you're young, like, it's, it's tougher to take critique. Um, but I was taught from a very young age to take critique and to be completely open with it as well. And I think that I'm being open with critique and being able to um, accept a challenge and want a challenge is a really big part of learning to let art um, be a part of your routine and be a part of you and your personality. Um, yeah, basically just learning how to, basically learning how to mature through your art is kind of how I started to take it, I guess. Do I like drawing landscapes and what type? Yes, I love drawing backgrounds. I love drawing landscapes. Um, my favorite type of background tend to background tend to be more urban. I love cities. I love um, villages and stuff like that. Um, in terms of landscapes, like natural landscapes, um, I really love stuff that involves water. I like um, cave systems. I really like. Um, I, ironically, I really like forests. <laughs> I, I'm not like I find that I'm rough at them at best, but I I um I do really like them still. Um, yeah, no, I love I love backgrounds. I love landscapes. I grew a love for landscapes and backgrounds once I um I started to hit college age. I used to hate backgrounds like with a burning passion, but I love anything mechanical, which is funny. I really like um very urban cyberpunk stuff. Those tend to be my favorite things when it comes to landscape work and uh, background art. 
Aaron sucks most of the time. Just got to learn to enjoy that bit. Exactly. Yeah, I, I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy struggle with art. Um, but I like I find it fun. So finding that learning how to make art fun for you is like half the challenge. And you learn how to do that when you're young. So that that would that's my two cents on it, I guess. Um, how much can I get for my elbows? Your elbow, unlike the patellar bone, is connected to your ulna. Um, so selling your entire ulna, w I don't know the price. I'm sorry. I don't, I've never tried to buy an ulna. <laughs> Nor have I seen it being sold. <laughs> I'd say that I draw my comfort zone way too much. Yeah, learn to get out of your comfort zone. It's, it's so fun to draw outside the comfort zone. Whenever I draw a piece... I, here's, here's how I approach it, right? Especially for those of you who kind of are stuck within your comfort zone. I don't try to do an entire piece outside of my comfort zone. Um, most of the time, if I am drawing outside my comfort zone, it's one little thing in the piece that's difficult. And then everything else I can say is within, quote unquote, my comfort zone, right? So what I like to do, like sometimes I do full pieces that are outside my comfort zone. I'm like, yes, I want to try something new. I want to do something weird. I want to have fun with it. Let's do this a whole entire thing. I'll do that. But if not, then, and if I'm trying to do like a quote unquote easier piece, I always try to make sure that there's at least one thing that I think is a little bit more difficult. Um, so like, let's say that I had like my recent school assignment. Let me pull that out. Um, which I found was a very easy piece to work on. I didn't think that it was anything too challenging. Um out of my comfort zone i always lose motivation then make sure that you make it interesting for yourself that's very important um it was this one so i found that this piece was very it was very in my comfort zone for the most part like it's character oriented it's a very detailed kind of heavy background um but the thing that was difficult was it was top down uh four point perspective so it kind of had this weird fisheye effect to it um so that was the difficult portion of this for me um and the general rendering. There was a lot of rendering that I had to do. Um, but, it, like, it's a character that I really enjoy. And it's a setting that I really enjoy. And a lighting that I really enjoy. But I made sure that there was, like, one thing that uh, was more difficult for me. So, like, even if you draw within your comfort zone, make sure that there's something more challenging there for you. So you're still growing. And same with this one. Bunch of characters that I like. Big background piece. Three-point perspective. Top down. That's That was the tough part. Um, also with a composition that I'm not very used to, like big, long compositions I'm trying to get better at. So that was fun. That was fun to work with. Corin. Yeah, Corin. That's a, this is our whole D&D party. This is all of us. So this is my character. That's my partner's character. And this is Scribbles. My partner's character's name is Pierce. Uh, this is Scribbles. Pierce's dragon named Puddles. That's Lunin. This is my best friend's character, Sorin. And then Atrus. Um, this is our D&D party. I, I draw nothing but D&D for, <laughs> for my assignment. <laughs> four point, can you explain that? Sure. So four point perspective is, you know, if you have three point, you've got your horizon line, your two points, and then one above and one below. Now, if you had those one above and one below, that's four point. So four point perspective is curved. It's fish eye. Because you have to work like this. I've done four point and five point a few times. I find five point a little bit easier than four. Um, but four point looks like that. So if you've ever worked in fisheye perspective, that's four point. The angle looks hard. It's tough. Yeah, it's fun though. I love perspective. Perspective is one of my favorite things. <laughs> Every time that we have a crit in class, um, They'll always see, like, a tough perspective, and they're like, oh, that's Jess's work. Because <laughs> I always do a really weird angle and a really weird perspective for my work, because I just, I love working in weird perspective. It's just a lot of fun for me. Um, even though it's a challenge in a lot of regards, I think that it's 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 a fun challenge. So I've learned to accept the challenge, and I've learned to, I've learned to love it in a weird way. Five point, yeah. So if you had the four point before, there'd be one more point in the center coming straight at you. Five point. Uh, 
Might do a four point for my life drawing final. Good luck. Life drawing four point, not easy. That is a, it's a toughie. If you're trying to try and draw somebody in four point, <laughs> that's not an easy feat. Um, especially if it's your final, maybe don't do that. I find that the biggest risks are better taken outside of class. But if you really want to try, I'd say go for it. I'll never say no to you trying something new, trying a challenge. But if, especially if it's for your final and you're not used to it, four point is something that like, I always say go one at, one at a time when it comes to perspective. If you're not used to the other perspectives yet, don't do any like crazy stuff um, immediately. This is my framing device. No, you're probably sitting there going, Jesse, it's an hour in, you haven't done any other moods. That's because the moods are the easiest part. So don't worry, I'm just taking my sweet time with the actual illustration itself. <laughs> Has something four point perspective? I just explained it, but four point is fish eye, basically. I think the water, the grass looks kind of like water. Yeah, I am. This is a very small little thumb. This would be considered a thumbnail for me. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not I'm not trying to spend too much time on the on the grass. I'm like, you can recognize it's grass, that's enough. <laughs> What's the hardest perspective drawing I've ever had to do? The first time I ever did five point um was a portrait um of me staring into the bathroom mirror. I actually cannot show that one on stream because it was me nude. Um, so that was, that was for an assignment. Yes, I can do that for university. Um, but it was a self-portrait, more fine artsy piece that I had to do. But that one was done on a 16 by 24 sheet of paper, um, using acrylic ink and acrylic, nope, and acrylic gouache, yes. Acrylic gouache, um, acrylic ink, um, with a dip pen. So that was, that's my most difficult perspective piece I've ever done. Um, that one was with, like, pen and paper. And that was also, fun fact, my first time ever worked in, working in four point. So my very first time working in four point, I immediately chose to work traditionally, not digitally. Um, so that was fun. Did you say, stand in front of the mirror for ages or just take a picture? I took a picture of the area I was drawing in and then just drew me off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the toughest perspective piece I've ever done. Um, very, very fun to do, actually. I really liked that one. Um, he liked a different one of mine that week. He thought that that one was cool, but he liked this other one that I did um, a little bit more. And I'm like, that's fair. I think I like that one a little bit more, too. Um, another one that I cannot also I also cannot show on stream because it has no no words on it. So... <laughs> All traditionally done, though. It was for a course that had to be done traditionally. Um, so it was all... That one was done with ink as well. It was a week where we had to do everything in black and white. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll just experiment with India and acrylic ink for, for this point in time. What have I missed? Uh, this forest illustration. <laughs> I've missed painting. I'm not a painter, usually. Like, I have paint mediums that I like, but I don't paint, usually. I'll paint if I have to or if I'm in the mood. The painting is never my first medium. Like, never my first medium of choice. <laughs> I will exhaust all other traditional mediums before I have to paint. Or work with chalk, actually. I really hate working with chalk. Maybe I should get that turn. That was, that was a better option if I just kept it dark. Let's try that again. Yeah. I'm 
chalks for my child cousins. Chalk is a very viable medium. It's despite a lot of a lot of mediums get flack because it's like, oh, I use that as a kid. Some artists, some very prolific artists still use crayon. Just like straight wax crayon. I hate crayon. That's another one I don't like. But it's, it, you know, it, you can do anything as an artist, really. Am I good at sculpting? No. That is one of the very few arts that I cannot do to save my life. I am not a sculptor at a, in any right. Oh dear, what did I do? No, 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 stop. Um, I cannot sculpt. And funny enough, that is one of the only mediums that I've actually gone to a class for. Um, I've been to a pottery class a few times. I did pottery for like half a year. And then I learned uh, I didn't like pottery and I'm not good at it. So... <laughs> I'd like to get better at sculpting. I have a lot of polymer at home that I could be using at any point in time, but I never do because uh, I don't have the time. But I'd love to try sculpting. I'd, try, I'd love to try and get better just because I'd like to like make little figurines for myself. I really wish I could same. Am I using Photoshop? Yes. Photoshop is my program of choice. Uh, every artist starts out traditionally with pencil, but first prefers digital. Not true. Uh, nowadays, some artists start digitally. Like, I know a lot of artists who start digitally now. A lot of my students. Um, just because the ages are changing. Which is totally fine. If you, it, like, some people just prefer digital overall. Like, I, over, like, I can I do traditional? Yes. Do I prefer traditional? No, not at all. I far prefer digital at this point in my life. Um, I did start digitally, though. Uh, or started traditionally, though. Yeah. Um... But I far prefer digital by this point. I've seen some incredible work done in chalk. I never tried it. Too messy, in my opinion. Fair. Yeah. You just use Play-Doh? That- I, I- Good on you. Play-Doh is one of the worst sculpting materials ever, so... <laughs> good on you for that. Maybe I should have put this cottage on a different layer. It's okay. We'll just keep it like this. Stream is a vibe, a mood even, a mood perhaps. I feel like the digital pen doesn't feel as natural as the traditional ones. So right now, I would prefer traditional. That's totally valid. I remember when I first started digital work, and the pen just felt so strange at first. I was like, "This is weird." <laughs> um, I got used to it fairly quickly, but um, it's it is definitely a like an acquired taste <laughs> right at the beginning. Um, but then you get kind of used to it, and then you are suddenly making, like, these amazing works, and it's- it's always so rewarding. It's something you get used to. It's never something that you start off used to, I guess. Uh, doing traditional, I want to do digital art, but I don't know where to start. Uh, you know where I started? Drawing fan art for Pokemon Gold and Silver. So, literally, just do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> do what you're currently doing, just do it digitally. That's all. I started digital painting using my mouse. Worst feeling ever. Nasty. No, I... I'm, I'm lucky that I have an artist family, so I actually started with a tablet, um, and Photoshop. That was my first, uh, first program, and I'm just so used to it that I refuse to use most other things. Um, but, uh, like, I, I started with a tablet that was older than me, though, and it was used, so it's, it's whatever, right? You don't need to start with a new one. Nobody said you needed to start with new materials. My, my computer was half broken, and <laughs> barely worked, but... It was a good computer. Or it was a, it was a working computer. That's all you need, really. <laughs> mm. 
new digital slightly uncomfortable way less limitations yes digital is very very forgiving it's the most forgiving medium ever this warmth back. Oops. So what I'm doing right now, y'all, is just uh, bringing some warmth back into the shadow, making it feel a little bit more um bright, I suppose. Shadows are never just a single color, so it's nice to have multiple in there. Let's not risk it. <laughs> not right now. I'll do that another day. What things do you find you can instinctively draw without much study? For me, it was his expressions. Same. Yeah, expressions were something that I just always had down packed. Um, I've been complimented on my expression, like, the way that I draw expressions for a very, very long time. And I think that, like, expressions were something I was just very naturally good at. Um, designs as well, I think, was just something I was very good at, just because I, I, I grew my visual library very quickly. Um, that's on me, though, just, like, the way that I love to explore with my work. Um, so that's more of a me thing. But, um... Yeah, no, I, like, nowadays it's it's rare that I have to study anything. I can look at, like, two references and I'm all good. But it's, it's, it's still good to always have references up, though. References are important. Um, okay. I'm trying to figure this out a little bit. <laughs> I'm kind of mostly just trying to figure out what I want from this. <laughs> like, what am I trying to make this look like here? Warmer at shot at the top. I'm trying to. Oh, there should still there should be green reflections, not blue. That's my bad. Um, but it, as it gets farther back, it's I'm trying to make it like colder. So like anything, all the shadows are very cold um, by comparison to the warm light. If you have a warm light, then your shadow should be cool. You shouldn't have it all be warm, or else it like reflects wrong within the piece itself. But yeah, this should have a green reflection, which I am trying to finesse right now. That should not be too intense, because if it's too intense, then it looks unnatural. This right here also looks unnatural because of the value difference. Okay. That might be better. Then there should be some red peeking through here as well. Sorry, I'm like I'm I'm figuring this out, so I'm like not looking at chat as much. Uh Does more saturated light produce less saturated or more saturated shadows? Neither. So everything produces a less sh saturated shadow. Um it's just the temperature. So if you have a warm light source, then your shadow will be um What's it called? If you have a warm light source, then your shadow will be cold. Like, that's just how it works. Um, and vice versa as well. If you have a cold light source, then your shadow will be warm. Um... Yeah. 
But yeah, no, it's mostly just how you work through it. So I'm trying to figure this out right now. I'm trying to figure out where my light source is trying to hit at this very moment. Because um, I'm trying to keep this very warm, very saturated in a lot of ways. And like, I'm, because my, sh my shadows are very cold and desaturated. So I'm trying to have that pop in a way. I'm using blue in all my shadows though, so I should keep that consistent in some way. It's blue as it gets farther back though. Bounce light kitties. Should not be this bright though. Let's tone that down. Very, very subtle shift of the hue. do characters and learn by and learning enough and that i mean i have to step back and go over things like composition and lighting yeah even if you say oh i've learned comp i've learned anatomy i've learned this i've learned that you've never learned any everything like you've never learned everything I've, I've found that like i've been told for a very long time i'm good at anatomy but as i've gotten older i'm like the more that i draw and the more that i learned i've learned that i haven't learned everything <laughs> You know, you learn every day. So even if you go like, okay, I'm done with this, I'm gonna move on, you're never done, right? So I'd, I'd always say go back and keep learning. Um, it's never something that you're ever completely done with. Um, it'll be something that you continue to work on until the day you die. So, <laughs> um, you'll always have something new to learn, always. Especially as you learn different styles. You will never stick with one style. I promise you. You'll get bored eventually. Um, so the more that you work, the more with art that you become. The more art you become in tune with, the different... The, the more you'll, you'll learn to expand and grow from yourself. You're never done learning. Really. You're always a student of some kind. Keep saying, okay, move on from Warrior Cats fan I've been doing this three years and go back to drawing emo cat art. I feel like I can't step out of my comfort zone, but I enjoy the sillies. Um, I have been drawing Kirby since 2009. Um, I have been doing OC art since I was 13. Um, I've been drawing monsters since I was 16. I've been drawing God of War since I was maybe 16. I like it, draw what makes you happy, man. Like if it makes you happy, then so be it. You should always, like, learn other things, but, like, stick with what you love. Try fan art, borrow boy, does it look like chicken horse dug a human out of child? Hey, man, fan art is just meant to be fun. Do what you want. You prefer to sketch on a different layer, convert your sketch to line art. I love having a sketch and then line art. That tends to be what I do. It, I can do both. I find that if I want to work faster, then I separate them. But if I am okay with working slower, I usually call them doodles. If I convert my sketch into line art, like if you remember like, like this guy, look at how many layers is on here. <laughs> I'm converting my sketch into line art here. So I am, I'm not bothering with making a whole separate layer. I'm just cleaning up what I had here. Um, I like this kind of sketched in look, like this rougher look, especially if I'm doing a design. Um, but if I'm doing like a final, like this one, then this had like line art, two separate sketch layers. Um, I had like, I had like four cleanup layers for this one. I cleaned this up four different times, four separate occasions. Um, but something like this, it's just one layer. Like there's, there's one layer here. I haven't, there's no underdrawing nothing. I, I sketched the entire figure, sketched the largest things, and then just cleaned them up. 
So it, it really depends. Um, but more often than not, I do like a whole other whole other layer. Um, a similar note, project means some friends as well as a bunch of other people finish tomorrow. I can't wait to see it. It feels nice to see something finally get finished. Yeah! You love to see it. I love finished work. Um, rough sketch, coherent sketch, line art, line art part two, flat. <laughs> Basically. Um, no. So I had my background and my character separate. Uh, and then my lines, I believe, were all on just one big layer. Main thing I've been struggling with is picking colors, especially for full scenes. Just some unified sort of lighting that isn't hideous. I'm gonna go over that in a moment. Um, because right now I'm just drawing out the scene, and then I'm gonna pick its moods. So if you're wondering, for those of you who are popping in, hoping to see this in different moods, that's coming up soon. I promise. <laughs> I am currently just um, working on getting the actual scene finished first. Do not worry. It's it's on its way. It's, it's we're getting there. For those of you wondering what the heck I'm doing, there's 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 method to my madness. Do not worry. like the VTuber thing, but it's 2D. That's called a PNG tuber. And a madness to your method? Yes, sir! You just stare at your art and realize you forget to add the next layer and have to undo all the hard work. Yeah, except I've been doing all this on one layer, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> All this is one layer, baby. I call this my quick method. Um, what else did I have on here? Oh, this cottage is in a totally different position. I don't know how different that is. Sometimes it's just fun to just let stuff happen. Not, fo not, not a let. Let stuff naturally occur. Not worry too much about uh, your initial sketch. Nothing bad than realizing someone you really liked watching me thought I was gone actually been posting and just missed them like a fool. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Looks like a book sitting spine up in perspective. Yeah, I love these weird triangle houses, so I think I just kind of let that seep into this. I think they're neat. Sorry if I ever go silent just for a second. It's me trying to figure out how something's working. Ooh, my lights just flickered. That's that's fun. We're all still here. <laughs> Can line art be in a different color than black? Always. I love having my line art a different color than black. Um, 
I usually use black if I'm trying to be quick, but it doesn't remain as black. I tend to color it in afterwards. Hang on, can I show an example? Of some I, I have done something recently that is uh, brown line work, but let me check if I can actually show it on stream. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> Here. Not that one. Yeah, I can show this one. It's a little bit of blood, but whatever. Uh, let's see here. I think it's. Yeah, this one's in a this one's in brown line work. I try not to. This is my partner and I. But yeah, no, we have a we have different line work. So this one is brown. If you look at my color picker, so the quote unquote black line work is brown. Um, the inner lines are all different colors though. It's fun to make different. Uh, it's fun to make different line colors. It's always great to do that. I haven't done line work in a while, but I use dark pink. Yeah, some people like magenta. I personally really like brown. Dark blue is fun too, yeah. Is Photoshop better than Illustrator? I see a lot of people using Photoshop instead. Depends what you're doing. Uh, Illustrator is good for graphic design. Photoshop is more for photo editing and illustration if you like to use it for that. But uh, it is very photo edity heavy. So it's really just whatever. Uh... But for illustration, you actually don't use Illustrator. <laughs> uh, Illustrator is for graphic design illustration. Um, Photoshop is more for illustrative illustration. <laughs> Which is which is weird, um, but you get used to the terms as you get older, or get more more used to it. No mushroom, no mushroom, and there's no mushrooms in this one, not this time. Okay. Ooh, that's one wonky looking house. Oh well, <laughs> we'll say it's fantasy. <laughs> I use black too. Yeah, yeah, I still use black line arc all the time. Um, but hang on, where's where's this one again? This one's black, I believe. Yeah, this line work's black. There's a little bit of areas where it changes, like there's some light, lighter line work going on in the highlighted areas, but like overall this is black. Look at how messy this is too. You notice how messy these edges are? All right, there's messy edges, there's stuff being cleaned up. You can't tell a thing if you zoom out, all right? Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about making it perfect. Sometimes it does not matter. Uh, I draw a lot of dark skin characters, so I use dark purple as opposed to brown. Yeah, fair. Fair, fair. Uh, Alright. We'll say that this is my first mood. Actually. We'll say that this is my first mood. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do some new line work for this next one. Alright, so what I'm gonna do... Right? We have my original color here. What we're gonna do is we are going to make this one into like a late afternoon. Let's make this golden hour. <laughs> it's a really easy way to do that, so let's do it. Let's just make a gradient map for now. Um, I'm gonna change some shadows around, but let's make a gradient map real quick. Um, yeah, notes. Map. Let's use my favorite one. Yep. Okay. Cool. And I'll hit that with a multiply, baby. Easy! <laughs> we love gradient maps in this house. So let's say that we do that. Whoopsie doopsie. So we do that really quick. I'm gonna change some uh, some saturations around that. I'll we'll call this one the multiply layer. I'll we'll call this one the overlay. There we go. Look at that. Totally different. Totally different color scheme. Totally different energy. Easy. Um, but yeah, but color maps, color gradient maps do everything for you. <laughs> Can you go over gradient maps? Never understood them. Sure. So gradient maps, what they do is, um, if you have the, like your color uh, there, all you do is you create a gradient map. What it does is it takes information from your values, so what your lightest lights and your darkest darks. Um, and it applies a hue to those instead of it being your lightest lights or darkest darks, right? Um, so for me, my favorite gradient map, the one that I use, I have its preset. 
as I'm oh whoops, let's copy this over. Unlock it. Image adjustments, yeah. Adjustments, gradient map. So what it does is it takes lightest lights and darkest darks and it applies it to certain areas. Right? So for me, all my darkest values are a blue, then your my mid-tones are all orange, and then it goes to a highlight which is yellow. Right? So it applies it based on those. It applies this gradient based on that. Right? And what I can do is I can turn it into a multiply layer, which is what you use for really quick shadows, and I can turn it into an overlay layer, which is what people use for really quick hue change. Um, and what that does is it just makes the entire... It makes all your colors more unified. It can also change the, the mood of a scene, or it can change the lighting. It can change the time of day, right? So for this one, I wanted it a nice, more golden hour, kind of peaceful looking. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to do this magic. I'm going to copy it. And now, we're going to keep painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust some of the lighting, make it a little bit brighter in some areas, bump it back up, make some of the shadows a bit longer. So much better than a single multiplier layer color, right? Right? I didn't... I. You want to know something funny? <laughs> The very first time I used a gradient map was with this piece that I did two months ago. <laughs> so I have not been using gradient maps this whole time. Um, but very, very useful trick. Very, very useful thing. I, I watched my best friend use a gradient map for the first time and I was like, hey, wait, how'd you do that? And she was like, have you not been using gradient maps this whole time? And I'm like, no. And I was like, I don't know what a gradient map really is. I know the name, but I never bothered to look for it. And she was like, oh my god, Jess. <laughs> so I went to go look for it, and then I used it. And I was like, wow, that's 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 useful. That's very good. <laughs> Should have been using that this whole time. But, uh, oh well, I guess. Anyway, gradient map's very good. <laughs> Yeah, let's bring this to golden hour. I was trying to change every single color, but it could have been solved this way. Yup! That's how it be sometimes, my friend. I understand completely. Always heard the term, never knew what they did. Yup! That's how it be! I've always found that's with a lot of art with me, a lot of things in general with me. It's like, I know what it is, but I just don't know the term, nor do I bother to go research it. So I just kind of forget and then remember every time that it's brought up again. So like with me, art is very much like a slow learning process because I'm mostly self-taught. <laughs> Oops. I should also add a... Oops. Which light do I use? Remember that your edge lights are a color, or sorry, a shape, not a line. You should always have a bit of variation in there. Cool. I just tested with old heart. This is a game changer, a hundred percent. Use gradients, but a gradient map is a new concept for me. Yeah, same. Yeah, no, I use gradients all the time, and I never bothered to try a gradient map for the longest time. All right, that's mood two. You see why I spent the most time on the actual piece itself? <laughs> all right, doing these moods doesn't take that long. So let's do number three. Let's make this one nighttime. And we're going to do that same fun little trick that we just did. Oh, 
Oh, actually, I should label these. Let's use this. Let's say that this one's like daytime. Let's say this one's like cozy. Late afternoon. Is it Discord? Yeah, it is a Discord. It's how you submit your uh how you submit the submissions for the beginning. Yo, I'm hungry, dude. <laughs> let's say that this one's like night. Let's let's make this one spooky. Let's do a spooky mood. Spooky. Night. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add some extra stuff to this one though. That's all good if you can't you can't join. Sorry, I get annoyed every time that I have a Discord noted. I need to go and check. Ah, my partner's live. I'll go pop in after my stream. There's a spooky day? Yeah, it's called Halloween. It passed a few days ago. Oops. Let's copy this. No, stop. Uh Make this the multiply layer. Actually, no. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's let's check something. Let's check this gradient map. No, I don't want black and white. Um, let's see here. What colors should I use though? So how I'm choosing them right now is mostly based on hues that I want for this. What this one does is it changes the color of whatever it is you overlay it onto, right? So this one makes it a little bit more blue, right? My multiply layer makes it darker. And I think I want an overlay as well, just to bring that bright, or just to bring that saturation in there too. Yeah, let's turn that down though. Let's turn that way down. There we are. Much better. Here we go. Cool. Uh, it's dark though. So what we gotta do now is fix it. So we have the original layers. Let's copy that. Whoopsie doopsie. That's not what I wanted. Let's copy that and merge that. And let's fix it. Uh, I've watched your video on color theory, but I still don't know how to mix different colors to make a mood. Teach me your ways. Um, sometimes it's colors. Sometimes it's just adding elements, taking away elements. Colors have like quote unquote meanings that you can always turn towards that do change based on interpretation. But like it's, it is very much contextual based. That's another big thing. Up 
brings it in more. And let's add, let's add a light spatter and a fog. And you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna use a different layer because I want to add effects to that layer. I'm gonna make this just a little bit spookier. That's what I wanna do. So I wanna make this a bit foggy. Talking about my art, my friends, one of them was like, you can't create red, blue, or orange with other colors, we all left. Or orange, no. Uh, also, you can't create red with other colors is a lie. You can create red using magenta and yellow. Um, blue, you can create using cyan and red. Yellow is, yellow is a, is a normal color, yeah, we're all good. But yellow you can't use, you can't uh, make with other colors. But red and blue, yes, you can make with other colors. There you go. You've, uh... <laughs> Education. <laughs> Color theory. Everything that your teachers have taught you is a lie. Um, but yes, you can indeed make red with other colors. Red is a product of uh, yellow and magenta. That's based on the contemporary artist's color palette. Um, even though we have this contemporary palette, not all artists use it. Some people do prefer to work with the traditional stuff, which is like 100% fine. It's to each year their own. Um, personally, I really like the contemporary way of working, but like that's that's up to you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a very, it's a newer concept. It's just in the, the early 2000s because it's very scientific. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's fun. It's very, very fun. It's when science mixes with art. I'm a very big fan of the science of art. So uh, when I had my color theory course, I remember when my prof was like, uh, actually, your, your primary colors are different if you're working in a more contemporary way. And I was like, oh, and then I had to read my textbook. I loved reading that textbook. That textbook was so much fun to read. Um, do you know that a class is fun if I enjoyed reading the textbook? So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was a it was a good time. It was a good class. What I'm doing right now is I'm bumping up these colors a little bit. I should have continued using this one. I'm bumping up these colors just a little bit, making this fog feel like it's being hit by light, making it a little bit more mysterious. Maybe I should turn this into, no, not overlay. Why? Why do you do this to me? Control you, please. Thank you. Oh. I think hard light works. Okay. Foggy. Name of book? Um, 
it's free online for everyone. Um, hang on. I know it's in my bookmarks. Uh... Line, Light, and Form by Glenn MacArthur. You can find it. It's free online. Next semester I'm taking color theory, but it's an online class. I heard the teacher doesn't teach. I'm sad. Ah, uh, yeah, sometimes it's asynchronous. My, uh, my color theory course is asynchronous. It was, um, sometimes it was hard to keep up with, but uh, eventually I got used to it. Let's go with that. <laughs> Sorry, by who? Glenn MacArthur. G L E N N M C Arthur. <laughs> yeah, Line Light and Form by Glenn MacArthur. I'm trying to learn, find the hue saturation keybind for weeks in my design course. I use CSP, but helping other people, I can try. I keep trying to find that in their programs. Uh, hue saturation, control U is what it is for Photoshop. I believe it's the same for a CSP. Oh, we've only got 14 minutes left. Can I suggest a mood or color scheme? No, I'm, I'm kind of doing these all off the top of my head. It makes it just a little bit faster. Okie dokie, last one. We're gonna do this one. Uh, we're gonna make this one an unnatural lighting thing. I'm gonna make this one kind of apocalyptic. Um, yeah, because this one's very cozy. I should have added more to that one. Hang on, let's add more to this one. I wanna make a, I wanna make a little smoke pipe. Chimney really dark and ashy, maybe. Sing over and cleaned. I just use layer adjustments to CSP. I didn't know it was a key bind. There's always key binds for everything. Um I guess apocalyptic would have made sense, because then it's like Hang on, I'm trying to think. Uh it's kind of just be game like me doing it in different lights, but I guess it's I, I guess it's different moods. Um Maybe it looks like a more melancholic one. Let's do one where it's raining. I'll make this our last one. Make this one rainy. Why not? Let's let's do something fun. Let's do. Uh, or we'll make this last one just uh, make me put in a little bit more effort. <laughs> All right. So we're definitely gonna need a hue one for this. Uh, image adjustments. Gradient map. All right. It's always black and white. 
Uh, let's make it cold. I'm using my, uh... Fun fact, this is the palette that I use... This is the, the grays that I use if I am illustrating a background piece. Um... Or I'm, Ill or I'm making... What's it called? Sorry, I'm just trying to get this right. Um... I use this, this, uh, those grays if I'm doing, like, conceptual work. So it's a concept artist gray, is what I like to call it. No, let's do that. More so. And then we need this in overlay as well. Yeah. Yeah, gloomy. Just a little bit gloomy. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to desaturate it a little bit in a more natural looking way. The hue does everything though. There's a lot of different ways you can work with this though. Oh, alright. Um, we'll call this the originals. Interior teacher showed us your videos in class. I love them. Oh, I'm glad! I, I do my best. <laughs> Wait, your interior design teacher? Why? What, what did I teach that was interior design? Like our teacher last year made the class watch the color theory video? Sheesh. <laughs> Off topic, but I keep on searching character dynamics on Pinterest and changing my OCs every two seconds. Hey man, they're your own characters, whatever. Shot. That is literally what what this is. That it says Rady, bro. <laughs> video. What was on the lines video? Just, I'm gonna be totally real with y'all. I do these live streams and then just forget what I did until somebody else brings it back up. And then they're like, you remember when you did this? And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> I do a lot of this off the top of my head. I don't bother to try and like think. <laughs> Sometimes I just get tired. Hiccups and drawing or nature's art challenge. What I like to do if I have the hiccups is I hold my breath for as long as I can until I like can till it hurts and then I let it go and then it's like fixed. It, it works every single time. Light tips, lol. Yep. F yeah, just downloaded Photoshop. Photoshop is not a beginner friendly program, it is one that you learn over time. <laughs> Goodness, I'm so sorry. Can you hear that car outside? It worked brilliant. Thought I saw. Do you remember that? Remember that I taught you that D and D isn't from Stranger Things eight Fridays ago. That was eight Fridays ago. I do remember that though. It hurts my soul every time that I hear somebody go, "Oh, D and D, that thing from Stranger Time, Stranger Things," and I'm like, "You know, it's not from that. <laughs> it's been around since like the '70s or '80s." Like, it has been around for a very long time. 
Don't worry, I'm not just doing speckles. Give me a second. Yeah, it's the garbage truck. My apologies. My mic quality just drops significantly if I use a, uh, like a sound compressor. So I have to like keep it not compressed. So I choose to sacrifice a uh, background noise for a uh, I choose to sacrifice background noise for, um, what's it called? For the sake of audio quality. There you go, see? Easy rain. Looks more like snow. Yep, because I wasn't done. <laughs> Motion blur time. Motion blur time indeed. Wait, how? Motion blur. So, it, just in case if you wanted to draw rain, you can just draw a bunch of dots and then motion blur it. Rain is just circles in motion. Yep. You made a bunch of dots and then boom, rain. The fun thing about digital art is that digital art is just, like, a lot of it can just be done really quickly with a lot of fun effects. Fun fact, that's the very first time that I've ever used that and I didn't know how well it would go. <laughs> I've never actually tried. Maybe add puddles, maybe. I, I Like, I find that they're, it might disappear in the grass because the grass might just absorb it. I'm just kind of trying to make things look a little bit shinier right now. Like if it's just a little bit wet. Um. Slip a clip since slip a clip only allows three layers. You do realize I painted this whole thing on one layer. I hate working with layers. Like having all these multiple layers annoys me. <laughs> I like just having single layers. I've done entire line art without, uh, without multiple layers. Same trick for creating rain easily is also great for becoming a cryptid photographer. So true. Also becoming just like a found footage illustrator. How do you deal with imposter syndrome or being fearful to put on anything because you think it sucks? How do you know something is good enough to post or release? I just post whatever I want. <laughs> imposter syndrome, I think, is like... Oh, that's actually cute. No, you're right. That is cute. I like a lot of couple puddles. Um, I find that I don't struggle with imposter syndrome as much. Like, I do, 100%. But I think that imposter syndrome is just something that you have to kind of... As a weird as the advice is, it's something you gotta talk yourself out of. It eventually becomes a thing where you're like, listen, I'm being irrational and I should stop. If people are saying, if people are constantly telling me that I'm good, then like, why, why would I just fight them? Are they lying to me? Do I really believe that everybody's lying to me? And if the answer is no, then like, you're being irrational. And then it's just like, okay. And then, you know, which is like weird and annoying advice, I guess, but it worked for me. Um... And the thing is, is that, like, if you post nothing but finished pieces, then, like, you're already setting yourself up for failure when it comes to a portfolio. You know, you, portfolios love works in progress. They love to see your mistakes. They love to see how you work. They don't just want to see final pieces. So it's like, you know. Also, you should never amount your worth to likes on social media. You should never amount your work to stuff like recognition i think that what's important is if you're having fun and if it makes you happy then that's enough i don't like it when people are like 
they're constantly like, oh, I hate my work. Oh, I hate this about my work. I hate that about my work. I hate art. I hate blah, blah, blah. You're making yourself hate art, man. Like, it's not healthy. It's self-deprecation is the death of artists. And I think that, like, if you constantly self-deprecate and if you constantly sit there and tell yourself that you suck, it becomes true. Like, that's just, that's just the only thing, right? It's like, if you constantly tell yourself, I hate this about my work, I hate everything that I'm doing, I hate art, you will start to hate art. And then that's just, it. that's your own making. That's you making it difficult for yourself. And then, like, at that point, like, do you even still want to be an artist? If the answer is no, that's fine. But, like, if you just constantly tell yourself, oh, I hate this about my work, I hate art and I think that everything that I create is terrible, then you're setting yourself up to fail. Like, there's so many different ways that you can be successful and it isn't likes on the internet, it isn't recognition from other people, it's it's recognition in yourself, man. That's the main thing. But yeah, it also helps to look at old art. It's a solid evidence of your improvement. Yep. I, I, as much as my old art makes me cringe, it's also it's also great. <laughs> I love looking at my old art. Hundred percent. Be your biggest fan. Be your biggest fan. Yeah, like I I love a lot of what I make. <laughs> I draw what makes me happy. Like obviously I have to draw like things for clients out of necessity, but I still draw what I love. You know. I think my the one piece of really good advice that my prop my one of my more recent props has given me is like you as an illustrator, you work in your own style and you have your own way of working, and your clients are just kind of poking in to see a bit of that world. You're not drawing your client's vision, your client you're drawing your vision with a bit of your client's input. Which I think is fun. Don't be a slave to your feelings. Feelings change, they come and go. Exactly. Um, but all right, y'all, that is six o'clock. Thank you so, so much for joining for this stream. Um, if you don't know too much about us, don't know too much about the channel, don't know too much about what we do, we are not just a YouTube channel, we are also an art studio. So if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, wingcanvas.com, check out the classes that we are um, currently offering. I believe both of the mine are full, <laughs> but we have a lot of other classes that you can check out. There's a couple of art mentorships, um, a few other cartooning classes, stuff like that. So if you'd like to check out the things that we offer, wingcanvas.com. This file that you see in front of you will be available as a JPEG on our Discord. will also be available um, and uploaded to our other social media platforms. So if you would like to download this file, keep it, save it, do whatever you want with it, just don't repost it. The JPEG will be on your Discord, on the Discord. Uh, will be posted there immediately after stream. But if you'd like my working files, this one has a significant amount of, <laughs> of layers. Um, a lot of different types of workable layers as well. If you'd like to check out my working files and download them, keep them saved, do whatever you want with them, they'll be uploaded um, onto Patreon. Or actually, don't, don't... Uh, you can download them, just don't repost them anywhere. But, um, you know, um, Patreon or YouTube memberships, both of those you'll be able to do uh, have my working files see how I work, see how my workflows go. There's also other things offered on our memberships. That fun stuff. Um, but yes, all right. Next week, what are we doing next week? What are we doing Sunday? What's, what's coming up two days from now? Um, ah, so we are going to be with uh, Vanessa this Sunday. She's going to be drawing Jinx from League of Legends. So, uh, League of Legends or Arcane, either whichever you were more familiar with. Um, She'll be doing that on Sunday. Next Friday, back with me, we'll be drawing room interiors. I'll be teaching about two-point perspective. That one will be a two-point perspective stream. Um, then I'll teach about interiors and how to make think of how to think of that in a more compositional way. Um. Mm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I will change the description of this stream as well. Um. But yes. Music details, yes, that's a, it's a stevia sphere. <laughs> I'll put it in the description after the stream. Um, but yes, thank you so, so much for joining everyone. I'll see y'all next week. Au revoir, bye-bye. <laughs>